Hello everybody, welcome to Bad Big Games where we talk about game news and reviews. I'm your host Joseph and today we're going to be talking about Phil Spencer's comments, the head of Xbox himself, saying that Google Stadia and Amazon are the future competition of the Xbox brand and not PlayStation and what that means for next gen going into the future. So with all that said, with all that out of the way, future Joe, start the show. So you heard me right. Xbox thinks that Google Stadia and Amazon are its competition. I saw this quote being thrown around various websites, various Twitter posts, kind of just misconstruing the message that Phil Spencer was trying to convey here. And I feel like I need to do everyone a favor and kind of clear up this quote once and for all. So Phil Spencer had an interview on a website at Protocol, and he had to say this about the future of Xbox and the future of their competition. And Phil said this, when you talk about Nintendo and Sony, we have a lot of respect for them, but we see Amazon and Google as the main competitors going forward, says Spencer. That's not to disrespect Nintendo and Sony, but traditional gaming companies are somewhat out of position. I guess you could try to recreate Azure, but we've invested tens of billions of dollars in cloud over the years. So that's a multifaceted quote. It's very complex. And that's why I see a lot of people kind of reading into the tea leaves and kind of misdirecting folks. So let's break down this quote piece by piece. He says, when you talk about Nintendo and PlayStation, we have a lot of respect for them, but we see Amazon and Google as the main competitors going forward. Why does Phil Spencer say that? Is that a slight towards Nintendo or PlayStation? No, Xbox is trying to build a relationship with Nintendo. We see that it's obvious Cuphead's and Smash technically, right? They don't see PlayStation as competition anymore. It's not a slight to them or them trying to change the competition. It's just how Phil Spencer is trying to align his company. He knows when you take a look at the top five selling consoles of all time, whether you throw handhelds in it, whether you just leave it at home consoles, Xbox never is in the top five. They're never going to probably be in the top five, but they know that they can compete there. They know where their space is, but they also want to branch out. And when you have something like the Azure servers that is world renowned for being some of the best servers in the world, then Phil says, well, how can we use this and utilize it towards gaming? And you see that with xCloud. And they're also looking at the bigger picture as well. Well, who are two other companies that could compete with us that are looking to compete with us in this space? And only two tech companies come to mind, Google and Amazon. That's right. Amazon is a tech company and you always kind of forget about that because they're a huge marketplace. But there are, those two sites alone garner so much sight, so much traffic. They are able to handle, and I know, wait for the pun and hold your erections, heavy loads when it comes to server capacity. It's so damn hot. Because for some reason, people kind of forget that Google is owned by Alphabet, the larger parent company. And Alphabet owns the two largest search engines in the world, Google and YouTube. And for the sake of argument, Google pretty much helps regulate the flow of the mainstream internet as we see it as consumers. Those servers can take video games and we're seeing it with Stadia. Like, let's be honest. Stadia is a bit of a shit show right now, but who knows where they will be in a year or two or five years from now or 10 years from now if Google remains on pace with this streaming tech. And then we take a look at Amazon and yes, they're not officially in the race yet, but they've been taking large steps into the gaming field. I mean, buying Twitch outright, the largest place to stream your games with over what? Like, is it 70% of all people are streaming on Twitch, that's a lot of server capacity that Amazon is learning and has learned how to wield. Hell, the marketplace themselves, the Amazon.com is the largest marketplace in the world. No duh, and people don't realize this, but these servers that host Fortnite, guess who owns those? It's Amazon. So yes, Amazon could do a lot into the gaming field and we've also seen them introduce hybrid game streaming a few years back so amazon is looking to get into the cloud gaming and what phil spencer wants for the future of xbox is saying hey listen 
we know we can't compete with PlayStation. We know what we have. We know that the market share is going to be probably what it's going to be going forward. Let's just keep what we have in the console market and then try to see what we can do in the cloud and try to win over as many people as we can over to Game Pass. That's why they built all these huge studios or bought all these huge studios and let them do whatever is because they want the Netflix like model where every quarter you have a game or two to look forward to from the Xbox catalog to keep you subscribed to Game Pass. And to sum up that first half of the quote, Xbox is right. Their competition, if they're going into the cloud gaming, is Google and Amazon. Put an asterisk on those names because it's if those two competitors succeed and gain a following. That's what Microsoft's thinking about. They're no longer thinking so much on hardware. They're thinking about the cloud. But what about the second portion with the whole Nintendo and Sony quote? And again, to reiterate, when Phil Spencer says not to disrespect Nintendo or Sony, but traditional gaming companies are somewhat out of position. So with the latter half of that quote, it does sound like, if you want a sound bite, it does sound like Xbox is throwing shade at Nintendo or Sony, but in all honesty, how I interpreted it is strictly just on a business end. It's no feelings hurt whatsoever. He's not being mean, he's trying to state what he feels is a fact because why would Xbox work so hard to have a great relationship with Nintendo to try to put their games on the Switch to just have them, you know, diss them in a quote like this? It wouldn't make sense business wise. So I think Phil chose his words in a wise way by saying they're out of position. It's not saying that they can't fix their positioning, but how he feels is yeah, Nintendo's in a great spot right now, PlayStation's in a great spot right now, but where is gaming going to be in the next five years, in the next 10 years? As Phil's saying, it's in the cloud. It is the Apple TV. It is that hockey puck you put under your TV and it beams up your content from a server somewhere in California, right? That's what Phil Spencer is trying to get at here. So no, he's not being mean to Nintendo. He's just trying to state his philosophy on the matter. And if he is right, let's be real with each other here. I think he is right. I think when you take a look at PlayStation's cloud infrastructure, when you take a look at them practicing with the purchase of Gaikai, what cloud gaming would look like with PlayStation now, we've seen Sony not get it completely right, and we've seen them partner up with Microsoft to get some Azure servers to support whatever they think the future of streaming is going to look like for PlayStation. So it's a win-win for Microsoft. Phil Spencer knows firsthand where Sony is right now when it comes to cloud streaming, and they know that they're ahead of them. Now, when it comes to Nintendo, Holy shit, man. They are the kids eating glue in math class. They are, they're a company that can't figure out online gaming. I mean, they can't even figure out cloud saves, let alone cloud servers. So yeah, I actually think the warning sign right now is really for Nintendo more than anyone. And I know that sounds crazy because their sales for their games and for the console at the moment is crazy impressive. And it might be at the end of the day, the second most or the most uh, sold console in the world, the Nintendo Switch. But again, nothing lasts forever. And what will a Nintendo platform look like in five to 10 years? Who really knows? Now, is cloud gaming going to be the end all de facto way of play? I don't think so. I really think that it's not like how a lot of investors were throwing money at, you know, VR thinking is going to be the next hot ticket. What I honestly think is that it's just another tier. It's another platform in which companies can distribute games, how people can purchase games and how people can play games. And I think that's what these cloud services are offering. Like when we take a look at media like Netflix or movies are a great example, TV shows, you can buy Avengers Endgame at Best Buy physically, or you can buy it on your Apple TV, or you can stream it on Disney Plus. It's the way you want to consume that content and they're giving you that choice if you want to do that. And I think that's where games are heading, where, yeah, you'll have your physical media if you absolutely want it. You know, most people are gonna buy it digitally, and then, yeah, you have these weird services like a PS Now or a Game Pass that you'll subscribe to for a monthly fee, and that's how they'll get your money that way. And I think 
that's what Microsoft is trying to go for. They're trying to be the Netflix of video games and only time will tell to see if that works. So with that, that's been Phil Spencer's quote in my eyes. I wanna know how you interpreted the quote. I wanna know your thoughts on cloud gaming, where you think Microsoft, Stadia, whatever Amazon's doing and PlayStation and Nintendo. What do you think they're going to look like five years from now? Let me know in the comments section down below. Let's start a conversation about this because here at Bad Big Games, it's all about the conversation because here at Bad Big Games, we talk about all game news, reviews, and a podcast called The Trophy Room each and every Thursday. And if you like all that, please hit like, share, subscribe. It helps me out. It grows this big, beautiful family that I call home. And so with all that said, with all that out of the way, everybody, keep your wits about you. Have a nice one.